today I am going to open the Silver Label 64. First thing, well, I'm just I'm making sure I have the monitor is hooked up, the monitor is good, I have cables, I have things. It's not hooked into the Silver Label 64, but I know I have a good power supply and a good video cable so that I can proceed. Alright, we are connected. We are on. And indeed, the screen comes up. It's funny, I was talking to a fellow I know through the Toronto Pet Users Group, otherwise known as T-Pug, which, of course, holds the world of Commodore every December. And he said, as he looked through the video that I'd already done, he said, oh, looks like the video chip has been upgraded because it's not flickering. I had not thought of that. I do remember my original first 64, Certainly, it flickered. Now, is that this machine? I don't know. But definitely it flickered, and I don't remember ever doing anything to it to uh, change the video chip or do anything to make it not flicker. So, in this one, I mean, the screen display, I don't know how it looks on this iPhone, but it's it's not nearly as beautiful as later versions of the, the video chip, to be sure, but I do not see flickering going on. I do not. And I have written a very small program. I will run it. I forgot that I had this larger flat screen monitor hooked up, and usually the display looks better. Or, no. The display doesn't look better, it just it doesn't look so bad when recorded by the iPhone. So anyway... This is now running, you know, Commodore 64, yeah, 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 on and on. And still, I see no flickering on either monitor. And so, here we are. The insides of the Silver Label 64. And what do I see? Well, I see a lot of ceramic chips, I do. I really have not looked closely, and of course, my reading glasses are not right here. They are not. But certainly, this does look early, as it should. If we move in, I'll just see how this That, it's assembly 3-2. Oh, I should have had my glasses here. 6298, I think. TB, 1982, Commodore 64. I know there are other things to look at. I'm not sure what. One thing that I've heard people mention is ceramic RAM chips. And indeed, those look ceramic also. That looks like a ceramic SID chip. And I see this next year, this is a 64 revision 2. Da, da, da. So that, I don't know. Is that original? Has that been upgraded? I just don't know. Moving along, well, just looking. Oh, I need my glasses because I really can't see, but it does look like. The chips are all from 82. There's some ceramic ROMs. I think that's supposed to mean something. It tells something. And there was something else I was reading on the 64 preservation site that means something I'm supposed to look for, but I'm not sure what it is. So let's just look around now. Can I see you in there? Well. I can see, but uh, uh, I need my glasses. Anyway, here we are inside Silver Label 64 serial number S0000101010. I'm going to get my glasses. Okay. 
I have my glasses and indeed everything I see here says 1982 that's the last number on some of the codes here and sometimes the code is very simple it just says 1982 but like on the 6510 it's this would be the 16th week from 1982 and the SID ship now this other I guess it's a PLA chip it has a sticker on it maybe it's been changed I'm just not sure well, I'm just trying to get a look at these uh, um. yeah oh okay at the beginning of each number way down at the bottom there it does say 82 so now I'm going to take that cover off and see what lies beneath. Right, so we are deep in the heart of the video circuitry. And this video chip says, from what I can see, these are not my best glasses, 2082. I'm not sure, I would have to check. Maybe I should write to Bill Hurd. And say, well, I know they fixed the flickering by making it flicker in the same color as or the, the background or the whatever. Anyway, they didn't really stop it flickering. They just, just meant you couldn't see it. But was that done through the video chip? Or this is probably the PLA chip. Was it done through the PLA chip? I don't. I'll see what I can find out. Alright, so we're still open. I'm going to turn this back on. Makes the appropriate sounds. And up comes the screen. It really doesn't look very good. I am tempted to take a screwdriver and turn that potentiometer right in the middle. But do I dare? Because I think it might help. Well, the screen. Oh, that's a little brighter. I'm not sure. If I, anyway, I, I, maybe the blue improved a little bit. Um, it's better than other things I've seen. Remember, this is just through the front. And I'm sure it's going to look not great on there. Maybe we can go look over here. Eh, you know. Anyway. So, if anybody knows how the flickering was fixed, I'd love to know. I'm going to take some pictures. I wish I had looked more carefully. I know whatever this is, is significant. And there's something else somewhere that is, could it be that? I don't know. That is significant about telling what's what there is. Anyway, perhaps I will refer to the 64 Preservation Project or 64preservation.com, or whatever it is, and see what it is that I don't know. Oh, maybe that's something on there. Um, uh, yes, that could be something. I think I will shoot pictures of this. Anyway, so here we are, inside. Perhaps the first Commodore 64 ever sold, at least that we know of, that we still have around that has a serial number other than the first two that were basically typewriter things on a white sticker. Anyway, I'm gonna shoot some pictures and I'm gonna check online. Hello, hello. Well, I am looking at the screen 
of c64preservation.com and the fellow I mentioned before, Steve Gray, who I was talking to, and he mentioned it. It looks like my video chip didn't flicker. I said, oh, yeah, look at that. So, um, and it doesn't seem to flicker. But anyway, there he is. He told me he had a machine on the registry here. I didn't look and see how far down it was. It's not very far down. It's S0006854. And, oh, I see another name I know there. Ernie Chorney from T-Pug. Cool. Um, it, it's not going to take long for me to get up here. See if I recognize any others. I do not. Oh. All right, so we have arrived at me, S0000104. Now, as I say, I came here to find out there are other things, other ways to tell, or there's other things they were asking about. And so one thing I did not put in, and I believe what I have on the, from what I saw, it was the revision of the board is B. But there was other stuff, so I'm going to look around here and uh, see if I can find the other questions. So, once again, I'm looking at the c64preservation.com website, and I've acted as if I'm going to enter another machine, and I could, but I don't have one handy right to do it, just wanted to see. So, board revision. I know that. Mine is a B. Board serial batch is typically stamped on the labels on the cartridge port chip, so I did take a picture of that. In the board country of origin, this is also printed or stickered on most boards made in. I did not see that, but I will go look for it. I shall. And I guess I have to send a message to see how I can update my um my information. It doesn't, I don't see a way to edit, but I'll find out. By the way, um, I have bunches of 64s. I've only ever gone to this site just now, but I think it's a good idea for uh, most anybody um, who has a 64 to go to. It is c64preservation.com and put in their serial number. Uh, because long after we're gone, this is historic information. And who knows? You may have something that they don't know about. You may have some other thing. I mean, they think they know everything here, and they think they've got everything, but there's a thing here that says, please notify me if you have one not listed here, and please enter only the assembly number and not the artwork number. So, Let's see what I can do here. Alright, so I am sending a message just to see how I can update. And also, of course, I know more about the chips inside. I perhaps should have waited to register until I looked inside, but I was just sort of eager and giddy. Uh, uh, uh. So, anyway, but we'll get this figured out. Hello. Well, here is a list of the five lowest serial numbers. Apparently the first two were basically done with a typewriter. I'm not sure if it was on a white sticker or white something, and they would be pre-production. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um, and I've been in touch. A fellow named John Justice wrote to me. He, he was somehow dubious about the, which would have been, uh, whatever, S0000185, he thought he had the oldest one on record, which he did, until I appeared. Anyway, Sheldon has come to see me. Hello, Sheldon. Um, so I'm going to go talk to him, and I'm going to carry on here, and uh, see if I can update my information at some point on 
C64Preservation.com. Stay tuned. Bye for now.